Uh, do you know this guy? <laughs> do you know this guy? <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's make a bet. This man promises us a road, as I talked about. This man promises us a wall. Both of them are politicians, right? Let's come back and look at their political report card in 10 years. Who has been more successful? 2027, let's look at the report card in 10 years of Xi Jinping and Donald Trump. If I, uh, any, do you guys like uh, uh, gambling? Anybody likes gambling? Yeah. <laughs> I love gambling. <laughs> and if I was gambling, I would be gambling on this side. Not on that side. This gentleman is promising us the future forward. This gentleman is promising us the past, the 20th century. Time will tell which one is going to be more successful in the next decade or so. How many of you took geography when you were in high school? All of you. Very good. So you are familiar with maps. Very good. In fact, no you are not. In fact, none of us are. What will help you in corporate environments more than anything else. In fact, I am arguing what will help you in corporate environment more than numbers, more than a strategic management, more than future planning is map reading skills, not map making skills. Today, maps in the world are very complex. We can have satellite maps, we have Google maps, we have a lot of different kinds of maps. So our knowledge to make those maps have greatly increased. But our knowledge to understand maps still remains very limited. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? This is a map of, obviously, Asia and Northern Africa and part of Europe, right? My proposal is rather than looking at the map this way, which means there is China here, there's India, Iran, Saudi Arabia, France, Italy, Germany, uh, Morocco, Egypt, blah, 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 these countries with political borders. And by the way, we have 190 countries in the world, right? So in 1945, we had 50 countries. Today, we have 190 countries in the world, right? If I take all these political borders and draw a straight line, it's 200,000 uh, 200, uh, 200, kilometers of straight lines, right? I'm sorry, 2 million kilometers of straight lines, right? But rather than looking at the political maps, meaning borders, countries, or looking at the lines that are dividing us, let's look at the lines that are connecting us, all right? So I'm going to add a layer to this map. These black dots that you're seeing, any guesses? Anybody knows what they are? It's not clear. You see these black dots? Okay, here, check it out. Watch this. So what are they? Population. See? These are the population areas. Alright? Let me add one more layer. What are these? Black. 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 Ports. These are ports. Seaports. Let me add one more layer. What are these? Major airports. Let me add one more layer. What are these? Minor airports. Tiny airports. Small airports. Let me add one more layer. What are these? High speed railways. Let me add one more layer. What are these? Regular railways. Another layer. These are roads, one more layer, gas pipelines, one more layer, waterways, one more layer, uh, fiber optic cables that are going under the ocean connecting us. Let me add one more layer, airplane routes. Holy smoke. Let me add one more layer, future high
high speed railway. Let me add. There are so many layers I can add. By the way, this is a future of high speed railway connecting Asia to Europe. Europe. Gas pipelines. In fact, guys, let me take red. Do you remember the first map, the gray map with countries? Let me erase that. This is our map. In fact, <laughs> this is a Jackson Pollock, the famous American painter, <laughs> and this is the map of the world. <clears throat> it is a piece of art. <clears throat> we all took geography, but we failed to look at the real map we should be looking at. The real map is not a map that there's a China, there's a Russia, there's a United States. The real map are these fiber optic lanes that are, uh, lines that are connecting us are through our uh, technology, through our phone. The real maps are those airlines that we're taking to travel from one place to another. The real maps are those high-speed railways, those cities, those major uh, metropolitan and cosmopolitan areas that we're living in. The real map is a map that shows us connected, not show us divided. In fact, there's a lot of talks recently about North Korea, about US sending a battleship over to uh, Southeast Asia, South China Sea, Iran nuclear, all these things I think about, I think about defense <coughs> spending. Your industry is re related to defense spending as well, steel industry, very much so. But if you look at the defense spending of the world, this is in trillion dollars, right? So. It's roughly about this way. But if I compare it to infrastructure spending, so my argument is the world is becoming more connected and more stable, not more wars and more fights. This is the difference between the two spending patterns that we see. Who is benefiting from it? China. Countries that are doing trade with China as their largest trading partner is our 124 countries. As of the United States, it's 56. China is one of the most connected countries trade-wise in the world. Let me go to consumption. <clears throat> what is the most visited lifestyle destination in the world? It is not Grove City Mall. <laughs> What is the most visited destination in the world? Any guesses? Dubai. Who said Dubai? Okay, Dubai. Anyone? New York City, maybe? Hong Kong. Hong Kong? No, give me places like Disney World, Times Square, Paris Eiffel Tower. Right? Wrong. The most visited destination in the world is the largest mega mall in the world called the Dubai Mall. It is the Dubai Mall. Let's talk about how we're living as a society. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a particularly important slide for me because it's showing that the future of our living is city living. You can see it very visibly in China. How do we see it in China? Very simply, we're seeing it with the urbanization we're seeing in China. Majority of the people today, meaning over 70% of the world's populations are living in major cities. In fact, if I have to look at those cities, I give you a very good example. I don't call it Chongqing, I call it Chongqing Chengdu. Mega connected city, they're getting connected. If I have to look at, for example, uh, Dubai, I would call it Dubai, not Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Or Abu Dhabi, there's Dubai. I would call it Abu Dubai. If I have to look at it here, I'm not gonna call it Washington DC or New York. I'll call it Boston DC. Because from Boston, all the way down to DC, it's becoming one large mega city. Then you should not be surprised why your company is buying parking lots. Because they're investing in the future. The future is not just the steel industry. The future is what's related to megacities. 
1974, we have 10 cities over the population of 10 million. Do you know how many cities we have over 10 million population today? Any guesses? 30? Any other guesses? Any bets? 20, any other guesses? 150 cities over 10 million populations. Cities are growing. The future are cities. In fact, my argument is in 10 years, mayor of Washington DC or New York is more powerful than the president of the United States. In fact, mayor of Beijing will be more, more, more powerful than the Communist Party and the broader committee, standing committee itself. The future is about the cities. People, don't, people want to decentralize the decision making all over the world. All right. One of my favorite cities is Dubai. I want to show you this growth of the Dubai map. Look at it. From 1980 all the way up to 2010. So this is Dubai, this is Abu Dhabi. Look at how these cities are connecting. With new infrastructure, with new roads, with new and, uh, buildings, with new economic centers, if you will. All right? This is a map of, by the way, satellite uh, night map of Dubai, Abu Dhabi. This is Dubai. This is Abu Dhabi. Before Abu Dhabi was this big, Dubai was this big. Now look at it. It's stretching, both of them. They're reaching out to each other. Like Chongqing, Chengdu. Let's go back to the vision that we talked about. Anybody knows where that is? <coughs> and anybody knows where that is? That's also Shogun. But that's Shogun of the 21st century. That's a Shogun you will be managing. That's a Shogun you will be growing to see. You, 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 grow, you grow more to see this Shogun more than this Shogun. And in order to see that shogun, Kubark type of shogun, I urge you to go back to those four things that we talked about. Anybody remember those four things? How we produce, how we connect, how we live. That will give us a mental map. Regardless of the strategy, regardless of business development, regardless of asset acquisitions, regardless of Trump tariff, regardless of Brexit, regardless of all these wonderful things, which are noises, you can detect signals by looking at mega trends. Regardless of the department, regardless of the job functions, and those mega trends could be summed up in these four categories in the complex world that we live in. These are some McKinsey, I give, uh, McKinsey uh, 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 graphs. What I wanted to show you here, don't look at the numbers. I want you to look at the thickness of the lines. Let me give you an example. This is a flow of services, service economy that we have in 2001. Look at the thickness. So the, the thicker the line is, that means the larger volume of service is going through that, right? So look at the thickness of the lines in 2001 for ser flow of services. Now look at 2011. Which ones are getting thicker? The ones that are connected to Asia. 2009, 2011. Look at the flow of finance. This is 2002. Look at 2012. The interchange between US and Europe goes down. It gets, it gets replaced by Europe, Asia, Eurasia. Look at the flow of goods in 1980. Oh, goods, whatever goods we have. Look at it in 2001. Look at the flow of people. This is 2010. I want to tell you something about this. This is really important. This is a lot of people think. By the way, when I was growing up, my parents told me, uh, we're going to America. It's a great place. And I loved it. I grew up in the US. 
But you know what I will be telling my kids? Kids, you're moving to China. <laughs> so what politicians are saying, that a lot of people want to come over here, I don't agree. Over the course of time, Indians, not are going to, Indians are not coming to the United States. Indians are going to Dubai. Emiratis are going to China. Iranians are going to Singapore. That's the new trend. That's the new wave. Look at the data and communication in 2008. This is 2013. This is all the WeChat data we're sending back and forth. Right. I'm going to share it with you because I think it's really important for you to go through this. This is Bain and Company um, uh, evolution of companies. What did it look like, for example, 5, uh, 1500, uh, uh, well, 800 BC? What does it look like from 1500 to 1800, trading empires, how we moved over to uh, apprenticeship from like, uh, 1790 to 1830, and also early industrialists, like what you are seeing here with, 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 with uh, Frick, with uh, Andrew Carnegie, with, uh, with others like that. And then trust companies, the big mega giant oil companies, you can go to Titus School and see it, like Rockefellers and things of that sort and professional management companies from 1920 to 1970. And today, the world we're living in is called the shareholder primacy era. What can we do to create value? You're Shogun, thank you so much. We have so much excess capacity in steels. Tell me where we can make a rate of return. Where should we be investing our cash? What's the future of your firm looks like will be determined by how the world is being organized. I leave you with this. As we are going home, or um, as you're on your flight back to, to, to China, I want you to keep this in mind. You are, as a new multinational, your job is going to be much more difficult and different. Because the world is more connected and more complex. So what the challenges you will be dealing with requires you to separate the noise from the signal. And in order to, that, uh, to do so, you have to see the composition of this rise of the rest of the world, which I call it the 85 world. By 85, I mean 85% 85 of the population of the world 85% of how we eat, how we consume, how we live, how we connect, how we produce is fundamentally different from the 15% which is in North America and in Europe. This is a 124th floor of one of the tallest buildings in the world. Anyone knows where that is? Khalifa. Burj Al Khalifa. It's actually very interesting. It's called Burj Al Khalifa. Before it was Burj Al Arab. They changed the name to Burj Al Khalifa. I put this picture here to show you one thing. This mega giant building was built with Shogun steel, Iranian 